Hello and welcome to our next reflection. And I wanted to continue with the theme of anger. Yesterday I talked about how anger is often a result of our unmet expectations. Some of them we are very much aware of. Uh, others we need to really hold back and reflect uh, and really try to discern what is my expectation of the other person? What are my needs in a given situation that are not being met by another? And to help us to do it in life, I'm sure you are aware of, is the serenity prayer. Uh, God, grant me the serenity uh, to accept the things that I cannot change. Uh, the courage to change what I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Often we react to a lot of things uh, that are simply beyond our control. Uh, we would like to think that we have control over them, uh, but the truth is we are not. And one important aspect of that ability to control is another human being. Uh, and what I mean by that is simply the case that I have no control over anybody else. I may hold on to my expectations or my ideas of how the other person should behave in relation to me, how they should act, how they should speak. Uh, and it's a long list of shoulds, if you paid attention to what I was saying. Uh, and that list happens continuously in my mind. This person should behave in a given way, should speak in a given way, should know things, uh, they should be aware of this, that or the other. Now that's a very unrealistic expectation. Uh, some of it can be met uh, because the other person happens to be aware, happens to do the things that I would expect of them to be doing. Uh, but often the opposite takes place. And the issue really is about having a realis realistic expectation of the other. And by that I mean accepting the other person as they are at a given moment. Uh, the point being is that uh, I don't know the history of the person next to me. The truth is, I don't know the person who is living with me in my family in my workplace, uh, my friends, my relations. No matter how long I have known them or know things about them, uh, the truth is I don't fully know them. Uh, and that's a very stark thought to have um, because we'd like to be in a position of, but surely I do know. Uh, and it's very humbling to actually step back and realize and acknowledge, well, how well do I know you? I may know a lot of things about you. Uh, I may have come to know you over the years. Uh, but actually, deep down, do I know every single thing about you? And I think if we're honest enough, the answer would have to be no. And that's a good starting point for us to discover uh, and to put that serenity prayer into practice. Because what is it that I can change? Well, I can't change anything about you. I can try to influence you. I can try to encourage you. I can try to teach you. I can try to uh, share things with you. Uh, but I have no control over what you will do with what I share with you. Uh, so, for those of you who are listening, who are tuning in, I have no control over what you will do with the content of this reflection. I can only go so far. The rest is not up to me. Uh, and that's an important boundary to have and to remember uh, and to remind ourselves of in our life. Uh, that I am only responsible for so many things. The rest is the responsibility of the other. And if I remind myself of that, the chances are that my expectations of the other will become more realistic with time. There will always be new events, new circumstances that might highlight for me the need to adapt, 
to become more real uh, in that sense. So the journey is a continuous one, uh, but it is being made different by my awareness of uh, what can I actually change, what I have control over. To expect you to change is one thing, but then to realize that I have no power to make you change is another, and that's an important one. Because that power ultimately belongs to the Lord, uh, and it's up to Him to touch your heart in His own way, to make you aware, to make you grow, uh, just as it is for Him to touch my heart and do the same for me. Uh, so to know the boundaries, to know what I can do is important uh, in order to learn to have mastery over anger. Because sometimes and very often we get angry and we return to stir up this anger within ourselves over things that we have no control over. Uh, and it's also, and a lot of times, our choice to do it. But the point is, it gets us nowhere, it disturbs our peace, and most importantly for us to remember and become aware of, it is our choice. Uh, so we can perpetually get stuck uh, fighting against something that is beyond our control. Uh, and the answer, obviously, the advice of the spiritual masters of people like Evagris would be, well, choose the fight wisely. Is this anger in relation to this helping you to become more like the Lord? If it's nothing you can change, let it go. To know the difference and to learn to accept. Anger is essential because without anger uh, you wouldn't have the strength or the encouragement to do something about the things that you can change. Uh, anger, as I mentioned yesterday, helps you become aware of your values, of things you hold on to, some of them very important ones. And so it does enable you to actually stand up for those. Uh, so there is the positive aspect of anger that I use it for justice, I use it to stand up for others as well as for myself. Uh, we are not doormats, you know, being humble doesn't mean that I allow myself to be walked over by other people so they can do with me what they want to. Uh, I can actually stand up for myself, I can be aware of my own dignity, uh, and I can bear witness to that, as well as to do it uh, for the other people. So anger is a great power for change, for transformation, uh, if used wisely. It helps me to become assertive in the right sense of the word. Uh, so by assertiveness I mean being able to uh, be truthful to who I am, uh, to respect myself, my dignity, my needs, my desires, and at the same time to become respectful uh, and also aware of the needs, of the dignity, of the desires of the other person. Uh, and that brings us back uh, to what the Lord has achieved. He has broken down any barriers between any nation, any race or group of people. He has made us all brothers and sisters through our baptism. So for us as Christians, uh, the Lord has achieved that for us. He has given us that gift. And so by becoming assertive, by becoming aware of my anger and using it in the right way, I can bear witness to the fact that I don't have to agree with you on every single topic. Uh, we don't have to see eye to eye on all the things. It's That would be impossible and life would probably be very boring. Uh, but I can still disagree with you whilst treating you as my brother and sister. Uh, all of this, if I allow myself to be in touch with my anger and learn how to use it appropriately. And sometimes that means letting off steam also. The anger, as I mentioned, can be very powerful. Uh, but to find the right ways of doing so, not to hurt somebody else, 
not to hurt myself, uh, but to release that energy out of my system. Sometimes talking to another person might help. Sometimes writing, sometimes exercising, doing something physical. Uh, whatever it is, just be mindful of those two things. Uh, anger is not meant to hurt the other person and it's not meant to cause harm to me either. And so let's continue to be aware of this great feeling, this great emotion, whenever it comes to us, and continue to draw the lessons that it holds for us, and to use it well. Uh, because as I mentioned, and for Evagrius, uh, it is a positive emotion. It can be used positively and in the right direction. And so let's pray for the guidance of the Spirit to help us to do so, and to put that teaching into practice. God bless.